Hello YouTube, it's Utopian Buddha. I'm chilling here with the book Ethical Wisdom, The Search for a Moral Life by Mark Matusik. This is a fantastic book, guys. I've read it, it's, it's been read multiple times. I've highlighted it up. I think I'm gonna do a long form video on this just to just to get people interested because I, I think this is one of the one of the best books I've ever read, honestly. It's just so simple and, and straightforward and helps you learn a lot. So let's just get started. Um so let's just uh let me just I'm just gonna Go through the book and read the parts that I've highlighted. So here, here's something I've highlighted. You learn that our ethical lives are dictated by complex moment-to-moment -moment interactions between the most ancient parts of the brain, the limbic system that houses emotion, and the most recently evolved part, the neocortex, where reason, language, and analysis are created. The neocortex is also where, moral imag where the moral imagination, our ability to step outside of ourselves and into the feeling of others, takes place. The understanding of what it means to suffer not only our own pain, which anything but rudimentary nervous system can do, but also the pain of others, has long been considered the distilled essence of our humanity. So yeah, that, that was deep. That was deep. All right, let's go to it. See what else I've highlighted. So these are the... Jonathan Haidt uh, first popularized this theory. It was about the universal moral psychological foundations of humanity. So first, we're connected with harm and care. Second, we're devoted to justice and fairness. Then we have in-group loyalty, then we have authority and respect, and then we have the need for purity and sacredness, you know, the reason for religion and stuff. Um, we talk about neuroplasticity in this, if you're familiar with that. We talk about uh, how our bodies produce 100,000 neurons every day. Um, they talk about mirror neurons, the empathy neurons. Nature provided us with a mechanism for becoming other people alongside our deepening knowledge of what makes us good is an increasing awareness of what makes us monstrous we know that while goodness may be universal it is also fragile we're all too aware that while empathy can be easily aroused it can be quickly forgotten so yeah man this is some good stuff those who see fit to maximize their profit and pleasure at the expense of others may well fail to propagate their genes a scientist continued on the other side of this coin, those who are willing to sacrifice their interests for the sake of others may well propagate more genes than those who are not, you know, kinship and, and altruism and stuff like that. Since our brains are wired to learn through suggestion, mirroring, repetition, guidance, and not self-hatred, elevation is a more effective path for encouraging positive self-awareness. A good life is based on self-understanding, which leads to deeper connection to others, which leads to dedication to something greater than, but not excluding, individual happiness. Not only do less selfish people tend to be happier, they live longer and have better physical health than their self-centered counterparts. So I think that's, a, I mean, I got three minutes. I guess I could do more. So that was the introduction. I guess I'll just do one part, a, or like a few parts a day, honestly. So that's a good three-minute video. Then the next thing is going to be called The Laugh That Preceded Philosophy on Harm and Care. You got a nice quote by Eric from there. Man is the primate that emerged at the point of evolution where instinctive determination had reached a minimum and the development of a brain a maximum. So, yeah, dude, deep stuff. Deep stuff. 